Hello, welcome to this lesson, AC circuit analysis. Here we're going to start talking about mesh current problems. We'll have a sequence of mesh current problems uh, that will then build your skills in phasor domain AC analysis. So one thing I need to make sure you understand and realize is that we've already covered how to do mesh current problems in the DC type of circuits a long time ago. If you haven't done mesh currents in a long time, then stop this. Don't waste your time. Go back to the other material. Make sure you can solve all of those mesh current problems that we've done in the past. Because, as, we, as the same kind of thing for node voltage, once you understand how to do them in DC, then doing them in AC with phasers is really not a big deal. But you have to have those skills. So make sure you go back and understand how to do all of that. Then come and rejoin me here. Here we have this problem. Clearly there are two meshes here. We have this one here and this one here. And I'm trying to solve for the three voltages. V1, which is defined to be across this impedance. V2, which is defined to be across this impedance and v, V3, which is defined to be across this impedance. Now notice the plus minus is written on the drawing so you know exactly how the voltages should be oriented. And we'll get to that a little bit later, but that's going to be important in how you write your equations or solve for the final solution. So when you kind of think about it from a 10,000 foot level, if, there, if this is a node voltage problem, and it is, and you have, I'm sorry, a mesh current problem, then you have two meshes, then you will have one mesh current which is circulating around like this, we'll call this I sub 1, and then you'll have some other mesh current over here circulating this direction, we'll call that I sub 2. So these are the reference directions for the mesh current I1 and the mesh current I2, whereas now I1 and I2 are phasers that represent AC sinusoidal signals. In the past, you've done them with DC where everything was constant and not changing. All right. So we want to write a mesh current equation for mesh 1 and a mesh current equation for mesh 2. We will solve for I1 and I2. Once we have I1 and I2, we'll be able to find V1, for instance, by I, the current I, times the impedance going through here. That'll be V1. And this guy will be the current circulating through there times this impedance over here. And then we'll get to a similar argument about finding V sub 2 over here. So V1, 2, and 3 are all going to come about once we know the mesh currents. That's the bottom line. So let's find those mesh currents. So for the first equation, uh, I'll say for the left-hand side, okay, for the left-hand mesh, okay, we want to write this guy here. As we walk around the perimeter of this mesh, we want to sum all of the voltage drops that we uh, get there. Now this voltage drop, the first one we come to is actually a voltage rise, the way we walk through it, so it has to have a negative sign. Negative one, let me give myself a little bit of space because I'm going to have a lot of terms here negative 150 at an angle of zero degrees. That's a phasor, and it's got a negative sign because it's a voltage rise. Now as we walk through this impedance, we're going to assume that the mesh current is flowing through it this way, which will produce a voltage drop. So for most of the other terms, we'll have plus signs, and this voltage drop across this one will be I1 times